Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a two case break, a double header break of the brand new 2019 Topps Series 2 baseball. Um, this is a case of hobby and a case of jumbo plus 24 silver packs that will be popping open. So this is Pick Your Team 2. Uh, remember, just as a note for the people in Pick Your Team 2, for the teams that you bought, each team will get a little stack of uh, veteran comments, about 20. Veteran commons from the break will be randomly put into uh, into the pack, the pack your package for your shipment for each team. So everyone's gonna get a little something. So a very big thank you to all of these folks right here for getting into it on a Wednesday, new release day. 18 boxes, 12 in the hobby and uh, six in the jumbo. Pick your team two, 2019 series two baseball, brand new release. Jason Waters with that double last spot mojo, Brewers and Twins. And there's everyone else. Thank you. So we're going to do the hobby case first, which should take us about an hour and a half. And then we'll do the uh, jumbo case after that, which should also be a little bit over an hour. So that'll bring us right to the end of the night. We'll have a recap video too, so for those of you who are watching the replay, you can just skip ahead to that, unless you want to watch this entire video. Here's the next, here's the first box right here, box one, pick your team two, good luck everybody. We're looking for one autograph or relic card per box on average. All right, who's here for this break and what, uh, who's here watching live and pick your teams? I'll bet everyone's just gonna leave. And those be like, oh, we'll just watch the recap tomorrow. Good night, guys. <laughs> now, who's here for this and, and who's, uh... you know what I should do? Just to be a jerk. I should check in at every random, at every random point. So I'll do random checkpoints for people who are in this break and whoever makes it to the end. Maybe, maybe I'll give them some break credit. Oh, we actually have a decent amount of people here. Alfred's here. Johnny's here. Charles is watching. He's got the fills. Daniel O is here. David Bruins in the house. Arson is saying that this break is 4,776 cards plus the silver pack. So is that both the hobby and the jumbo case? There's 24 packs, 24 times 12. Well, there's 14 times 24 times 12. 14 cards, 24 packs, 12 boxes, and then whatever, how much, however much the jumbo has. So all of that adds, so both cases add up to 4,776 cards plus the silver packs. There you go. My hands are going to sleep well tonight. All right, so we're going to try to go through these as quickly as possible. Stuff like this will ship but they're not numbered. And we'll try to catch as much of the parallels as possible. Veteran commons won't ship. Rookie cards and inserts, of course, will ship. J-Hap, will J-Hap ship? I don't know why he was flipped around, but J-Hap is there. And we'll catch those photo variations. Our shipping team will catch the photo variations too. These are These will ship, but are not numbered, just different colors. There's Alex Blandino, 
Those are numbered, computer numbered. So what is it, 2016 cards in hobby and 2,760 cards in the jumbo. Ooh. We got Miguel Cabrera is our first hit. Game used jersey. So that'll go for to Jeremy Mennel and the Tigers. He's just checked in saying he got the Tigers. There you go. It's a facsimile autograph there. No worries, Jeremy. Thanks for getting in. There's Colton Wong. That's right, and uh, we were discussing the first break. We were discussing who are active players who are Hall of Famers, who are like guaranteed Hall of Famers. Mikel Cabrera definitely got to be one of those guys. Active player, Hall of Famer. Albert Pujols is another active Hall of Famer. Trout for sure, even now, if his career were to end tomorrow. Is that a Hall of Fame career? Maybe it would be, actually. I mean, if it wasn't for this guy, Trout would have like two more MVPs. Right? Which would give Trout like, what, five MVPs or something like that? in his like seven seasons in existence. Come on camera, I don't have time for this. There you go. Pete Alonzo coming into focus. Melanson. DNIP 1985 says, what? Trout has no titles and that other guy does exist, so So Trout even tomorrow? Not I think I think Trout's an active Hall of Famer. Right, Jerry Jerry Warnock saying Pujols, yeah, Pujols definitely. I think he might he was probably a Hall of Famer if his career ended after the Cardinals years. Hey, no worries, Bill. And if you're uh, if you're watching the replay of this video, you've got all the way through box one. You're like, this is going to be a long break. It is. If you're watching the replay, there is a hit recap video, so you can watch that. If you're watching live, you have to you just have to bear with this. This is the last break of the night, as well as jump this break. Believe it or not, this break is going to take us right to the end of the night. Arson says, I forgot that website it was I was looking at but at, at for active Hall of Famers, but chances, that is. And had Trout listed as 100%. Yeah, I think Trout should be. If Trout's careers ended now, then I think he won't be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but he'll eventually get in. Pujols has got to be first ballot, I think. M Miguel Cabrera, probably first 
or second ballot early. Yeah, Kershaw, I think, still needs... I think Kershaw still needs a few more years, I think. Maybe get some, uh, I don't know, some counting stats. Hit some milestones. Maybe World Series ring would definitely help. Um, Verlander's probably a yes. Jeremy, Jeremy Menno saying Miggy choked bad in the series against the Giants. I don't know if baseball writers do baseball writers really take that too much into into consideration. I don't think they do as much, not as much as as much as like basketball and football where chips are so important. I feel like it's not as much of a requirement in in baseball, but if you hit some of those counting stats like CC Zabathia, as Arson suggesting, yeah. If you hit some of those milestones and counting stats, 250, 300 wins, you know, a couple Cy Youngs, X amount of X amount of strikeouts in a career usually kind of does it. But Miguel Cabrera on his on his uh, regular season exploits alone. We'll probably get him into the hall. Maybe not first ballot. Maybe first, first or second. Early, I would say. Oh, come on, camera. There we go. And there's a top camera up there. That white bin that you see—that's the lid of a white bin right there on the top camera above my head—is uh, is where the silver packs are. So we're going to be using those. This is a different parallel. That is numbered. There you go. Felt different. It has a different back to it. 17 out of 99. We'll try to catch as many of those parallels as possible, but just in the interest of time, we're going to try to breeze through these as much as possible. There's Shane Bieber, the Beebs, for the tribe. That goes to Alfred and the Indians. There you go. Nice autograph for Alfred. There's Yolis Chassin for the Brewers. That's out of 2019. You think Bartolo Colon's a Hall of Famer? I don't know if he has the numbers. He has the longevity. He might go in just for that. I'd like to see him come back and play, maybe on an NL team. Stephen Wright to 2019. Who are the who are these stats for? Evan says Big Bart is in no way a Hall of Famer. Yeah, but it's Bartolo Colon. Maybe he's in the Hall of Fame of our hearts. Maybe that's where he is. It's true. He did get caught with steroids, with PEDs. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, I think people forgive Bartolo Colon for that. We're like, well, of course he should. Look at him. <laughs> CC has what? 249 wins, 3,033 strikeouts, six All-Stars, one Cy Young. I think that, that kind of does it. 
He'll have over 250 wins by the end of the season. He should have over 250 wins by the end of the season. He's got well over 3,000. That's a that's a nice milestone number for for pitchers. So yeah, I mean, first first ballot Hall of Famer for CC. Maybe not, but I think. Uh, Maybe not, but I think he'll he'll eventually get in. Levi, yes. The Adir Molina, definitely active Hall of Famer. He's got to be first ballot. Definitely got to be first ballot. Yeah, Johnny's saying CC should go... No lower than third ballot. I was just going to ask Jay Cohen. He, Jay Cohen saying C. Sabatha also has a World Series ring. So that also helps. How do you do in that World Series? He was 0 and 1 with a 3.29 ERA in that in that World Series. It's not bad. I just don't. I just don't think that. Uh, just don't think that that chips matter as much to baseball writers. I think. <coughs> yeah, I think um, Ray. Uh, Jeremy Mennel, I think, mentioned Verlander. Someone in break one mentioned, uh, Peter Team One also mentioned Verlander too. I, I agree. I think he is he is a uh, an active Hall of Famer. Yeah, Beltre just retired. I think Beltre is first battle Hall of Famer. But Verlander, I think, is hell bent. I don't, I don't know where, where, where Verlander is wins wise, but I think he's hell bent on trying to get three hundred wins or something like that. Like he's like, I'll pitch to, through my forties if I have to, you know, to get to get that three hundred win mark. I think he's really pushing for that. And yeah, El Adrian Beltre just retiring. He's got like three thousand hits. You know, it's got a ton of home runs, and fantastic defense. Longevity played for a long time. Verlander has 213 wins. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that he's really hell bent on trying to get, trying to get 300, which is a hell of a mark. I think I think uh, new school pitchers. New school pitchers. I don't know if he's gonna get uh, if if any of those guys are gonna get two hundred wins, let alone three hundred. It just doesn't have pitchers. Pitchers don't pitch as long, you know. Relief specialization and all that. I know. 30, he's 36. Hard to imagine how he gets to 300. He, it's, he's, I think he he said that in interviews. And he said he'll try to pitch through into his early 40s to try to chase that. It's a parallel I haven't seen yet. Out of 25, Tyler White, nice. Well, some camo, right there. Well, how many wins has he had in the last? 
last few? What is, what is he been averaging in the last few years? 15, 16 wins a season? He, he's got to have like 70 some odd more. Sixteen, fifteen, and sixteen the last three years for Verlander, wins wise. Right, so what is that? He's gotta have like I don't know, seventy five more wins or something like that. It's gonna try it. Still fifteen strikeouts, yeah, so he's still he's still rocking. Who knows? Maybe he can pitch through his mid forties to try to get to that to get to that number. Out of one fifty, Dale Murphy, Alfred giving uh, that goes to the Braves. Scott V. Alfred giving some stats with Kershaw. He's saying he's got to be first ballot, even if his career ended today. Oh, and we'll randomize these. Uh, left, right, or center if we find any that are different teams. Uh, Jeremy Mendel's wondering if anyone thinks Tigers call up Casey Mize this year. Man, I doubt it. Why would they? I could see them... I could see them calling him up September cup of coffee just to just to hang out with just to hang out with the uh, with the major league team you know just to get a taste of that just to get a taste of the majors but I can't see uh, Can't see them actually having him pitch in the majors. I mean, unless he's just just has nothing left to prove. Even then, why would you start the clock early? I guess the contract clock. So they, I mean, they might not even bring it up this year. So Arson's doing some math. Verlander, you're saying needs 87 more wins. He should pick up six more this season, leaving 81. So five and a half years at 15 wins per year. It, again, if he can keep up that pace, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, Jay Cohen saying forget about the clock thing. By the time there's a new CBA, it's not going to matter. That's actually kind of uh, industry insiders will say that's kind of a scary, a scary sort of thing. That the players and owners are really far apart on the next collective bargaining agreement, which could, which hopefully it won't, but could result in some, some stoppage, which would not be good. It'll affect everybody. Us, you, the industry, the hobby, the baseball industry. 
So five and a half years for Verlander, Arson. How many would that be? Thirty. Someone say he's thirty-seven. So four forties. But yeah, but I mean, even then, I, I would I would still argue that that why would they? I don't think they would bring Casey Mize up any earlier than he needs to be. They've got time. They're not in a rush. You know, so hopefully, maybe he gets called up just to hang out with the with the major league team, just to get a taste of the majors. And then maybe next year I could see Casey Mize. You know, he'll be in spring training, and then you see Casey Mize maybe in the another cup of coffee, and then start pitching some games next year. And then fight for a starting rotation the year after that. He's out of college, so he's his timetable is a little bit shorter than some of the high school kids. Jay, you think you think the deal is going to get done? Yeah, there is too much money at stake for everybody. And all the all not only just Major League Baseball itself, but the cottage industries surrounding baseball, like ours. Yeah, I've heard they started started talking. This both sides, but I hope it gets done. Some industry insiders I'm reading are even with those early talks are not terribly encouraged. I think this winter will be huge to see what happens this winter when they all get together. Arson, how my June bet spin? Well, yesterday I had a great day. I had like eight plays, only lost one. Still down on the month, but uh, you know, let's see, let's see what happens by the end of the month. First week down twelve percent, but on the season, I cre creeped up 0.4 percent at the end. We'll do another update at some point. Um, I was on Texas tonight. They lost to the Red Sox by one. I was on the Astros tonight. They're in the top of the 12th. They're tied with the uh, Brewers in Houston, three to three. I was on the Royals. They were an extra. No, no, they were down a run. They lost. And I'm on the Giants, who are up a run right now. So if I get the Brewer, or if I get uh, Houston and San Francisco, I should be relatively even tonight. Yes, May was definitely rough. June is looking a little brighter the last few days. So I think I'm getting back into a groove. It's a long season. Just as long as I'm even by or, or up by the end of the season, it'll be fine. So there'll be some good weeks, some bad weeks, but just need to rattle off a few good weeks. And we'll get there. You know, for entertainment purposes only. It's a long season. Keeps, keeps things a little interesting. Get well soon, Big Poppy. 52 out of 150. Game used memorabilia for the Red Sox, Derek Williams. For the Red Sox. Get well soon, David Ortiz. What a crazy story, right? I was pretty shocked when I heard that. I was like, David Ortiz, I saw, I saw it. I was, I was up late. It was, all, it was late, right? Monday night, Sunday night? I was up late. All of a sudden, I see I see news coming across the bottom of the screen. David Ortiz shot, and I was like, "What? In Boston? Like I thought it was here in the states at first, and then it started to trickle out that it was 
in the Dominican Republic. And then there was that horrifying video. And then, uh, I mean, thank God, seems like he's going to be fine. And then I guess New York Post or somebody was reporting that it's rumored, allegedly, David Ortiz was was messing around with the uh, with the wife of a drug lord, and so it's possible it was a possible hit. I don't know if that's true. It's crazy though. If it is, so wild. I guess David Ortiz back in back in the states got a second surgery in Boston and. Hopefully he'll get well soon. I think I want to. I, I want to. I, I wonder if. Uh, I wonder if the. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if anyone really actually. I don't dislikes David Ortiz, right? I feel like he crosses a lot of. A lot of uh, a lot of fan barriers, like team barriers. I always thought it was good. Right, yeah. Someone made a hundred k off a four dollars bet on the St. Louis Blues to win the entire thing. Um, I heard that Jason Jaspi is a big hockey fan. He was he was talking about that too. I think Jason was saying that. Um, I think Jason was saying that the guy had offered. That whatever book that he placed that bet with, bet with was offered like a like an early payout for not as not the full amount. He said no. I would have said no too. Just ride it out. Ray Ray is saying Adam is saying you're hearing it from me, everyone. That was the last shot Boston Sports has had for a long time. The draft begins. Jeremy Mendel says good. Arson says I can't wait to see Boston lose everything. Yeah, haven't they won enough between the Patriots and the Red Sox, Celtics? I'm okay with that. But who am I? I'm just a <laughs> I'm just a bitter Dodgers fan. All right. Next box. Yeah, David Ortiz is is loved by many. Yeah, I think he I think he he does cross. I mean, I think if you, if you really if you really press Yankees fans, I mean, they'd probably even say of that era, they'd probably say that David Ortiz was one of their favorite you know, favorite Red Sox players. Ray saying Patriots are done. Red Sox are a joke. Celtics are a joke. Bruins got to rework a lot. Good. I'm glad. As a as a Dodgers fan who lost to the Red Sox last year, and as a as a Lakers fan, and as a as a bitter uh, Raiders fan, still still salty about the Tuck Rule game. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with okay with all those all those teams just laying low for a few decades. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. Like, if you're big, yeah. Jason's like, if you're a big pop, you don't go back to Dominican Republic. No, I wouldn't. They're out to get you. He thought he could do it, and then they're like, I don't care if you're a big poppy. <laughs> yeah. Now, not to be uh, not to be morbid, you know, and I'm only saying this kind of tongue in cheek because Big Poppy's alive and well. But the hitman did a poor job, right? Wasn't there like a young kid? Did you see that video? I, I I did. I wasn't really paying yeah. too close attention, but I feel like that the, whoever whoever is doing that hit is definitely in trouble with the drug lord. <laughs> 
I, that that is an incomplete on the on the uh, on the scorecard. Incomplete on the grades. Done. Dunzos. There's Heath Fillmeyer, Legacy of Baseball autograph for the Royals. That's Stephen Rednicki with that one. Out of 150. Dang, Arthur. Arthur would be a terrible boss. Why is Jason just staying there? Get to work in Packstack. Jason's already worked. His day is done. Yeah, he has to do eBay list. He has to do the listings for tomorrow. Come on, Arthur. Yeah, I know. Arthur's about to catch some hands. Yeah, man. Everyone's busy here, Arthur. We're not. Jason just got up to get a glass of water, and he jumped. Arthur jumping down his throat. He just can't even do that. Can't even do that when Arthur, Boss Arthur's around. Just, just finishing up a bunch of eBay. And then goes to get a glass of water, and Arthur's like, "What's he doing, wandering around? Help the man pack stand. He's like, no, "I still got work. I still, I still got more work to do after that. Got to set up everything for tomorrow too." Jason's day's not night's not done. Man, Arthur just cracking the whip. No, Arson's saying, I don't think uh, anybody wanted David Ortiz's blood on their hands. I know, then you're that guy. All right, next box. We're halfway through. We are halfway through this uh, hobby case. And then we got a jumbo case to go. So we got another f about 40 minutes. For the hobby case, another hour and a half for the jumbo case, and then we will be done. We should this should bring us right to the end of the uh, end of the night. I can I, I can I can hack it, Arthur. I can hack it. Uh, yeah. So we're about a quarter of the way through. About a quarter of the way through. So this is the last night break of the night, folks. This this brings us. By the time I finish this break, put the break away, do the recap video, and all that sort of stuff, then we will. That'll bring us right to the end of the night. Now, oh, Jason, you don't have to. Don't let Arthur guilt you into it. Nick helped me with Nick. Pretty much <laughs> busted open the whole first break, so I'm fresh. No, Arthur's not even in this break, and he's throwing shade. I don't think he is. He might be in Picker Team 3. No, we timed this perfectly. This is this. Brings us right to the end of the night, and then I'm done. And then I'm out. And I go home. And I'm back tomorrow, folks. And I'm sure what's great is that we only have those three pick your teams that are on the site. Those are the only three that we have. So we knocked out two thirds of those cases already. We got one more, one more double header break to do tomorrow. And then it's all fun stuff, all short, short and sweet breaks after that. See, and then by by the time the weekend rolls around, we'll have all these all these longer breaks knocked out and out of the way. Easy, easy.
Sup, Scott, what's going on? I'm sure this has been covered in one, but what about short print and super short prints? Now nah, we thought we'd keep those. <laughs> it doesn't say in the item description, verbatim from the item description. You will get all inserts, RCs, SPs, short print, numbered cards, and hits, relics and autos or auto relics for your team. All of the veteran base will be put to the side, and then we will then pull about 20 random veteran base cards from the break, and then each team will get a little stack of vet base as well. With all the cards, is the shipment team aware of what they are? Of course. Otherwise, they wouldn't be shipping. Well, I can definitely get sassy, Arson. Especially when, when I know that Scott has been breaking with us for years. Black and Gold has been breaking us for years. And knows to look at the item description. That's when I get sassy. So yeah, our crew knows. I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think Nick is actually doing um, a pass. One, one pass through all the, uh, all the cards anyway, and then knocking out all the variations. And then the shipping team will be, will be just kind of going on autopilot and sorting them by team. So, Yeah, see, Scott's used to it. If I knew, he couldn't take it. There's Alex Bregman. Arson says, you'll just watch the recap. You don't need the reviews. All right. Yeah, this, is, this channel is not for the sensitive, ladies and gentlemen. Not for the thin-skinned. Alex Bregman. For the Astros, that bat relic will go to James. There's Taylor Rogers, who I picked up on my fantasy team thinking that I'd get squeeze some saves out of him, but that didn't happen. Yeah, this definitely gives me Bowman flashbacks. <laughs> Scott, that's for sure. Jaspi still is a family show. There's, there's no cursing here, no adult topics being discussed. We're like, we're like, uh, we're like Pixar. We got some, some wink, wink, nudge, nudge adult jokes, but mostly, it's family friendly. Kids won't get it. And maybe during a long break like this, you want to stir up a little, a little sassiness, so <laughs> to keep things interesting. Did I pass up a red? Who was it? Oh boy, is RTR going to be that guy? You pass that up and it's not going to really be there. Oh boy. Well, rewind on your, uh, you, you, we have a DVR av ability. You can rewind and let, let me know who the player was and then I'll, I'll see if I can spot it. I don't see it. Was it the pink with like the stars on the border? I don't think I missed that one. We'll find it. We'll find it.
Oh, in the second box? That was a long. That was a little while ago. We'll find it. <laughs> better, yeah. Better just check them all. Let's go start the break over again. From card one. Right, just start the break over. We have to be sure. We gotta find that pink parallel. Yeah, we're, yeah, we'll just we'll just do some noir cases. We'll push the break back to them. We'll just part two tomorrow. I think I could watch The Godfather Part 1 while I'm doing this break. I should have started it. What will, what will, be, what will be done first? Godfather 1 or the doubleheader break? Pick your team 2 from jaskyscasebreaks.com. Oh, I saw Eric Fed. <laughs> now you're going to make me look. Wait, I saw Eric. I know I saw Eric Fed. Nationals guy. Damn it. <laughs> now I gotta know. Kurt Suzuki, no, you're not Eric Fed. Where's your teammate? No. Oh, hey, no. There it is. Eric Fed, not pink. Aww. There you go. Oh, was it a different one before that? Oh, then I don't know. I didn't see an Eric Fed before that. How far along are we? Black and gold. Um, it is. We are halfway through the hobby case. So we've got about 40 more minutes in the hobby case. And then another jumbo case to do, which will be another hour and a half. All right, no, I believe you. We'll, we'll find it. Nationals. Jerry Warnock. Nats. We'll find that Eric Fed pink. If it's if it exists, but people are saying it, it does. So, It's Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn is your next hit out of this box. And that is for Travis Stevens and the Friars. I don't remember any Braves. Well, I don't remember any Braves hits. I mean, there could have been a there could have been a ton of. Uh, like inserts and stuff like that, but no hits, I think. Uh, no, wait, wasn't there like a Dale Murphy relic? That seems to be, or was that from, was that previous break? Oh yeah, Jerry says Dale Murphy jersey. That's right, yeah, there was a Dale Murphy relic. I don't think it was numbered, but it looked like that Tony Gwynn I just pulled. 
Yeah, I was like, I was racking my brain. I was like, I thought I did or something. Yeah, it's better than that. We we got a long we have a long way to go, Scott. I'm sure there'll be some other braids. The jumbo will be a little more will, will be a little more interesting. Because I think there's one autograph and one relic guaranteed per box or something like that. So there'll be there'll be a little uh, there'll be a little bit of a uh, little bit more visually exciting things in the next case. I think there's such a thing as a big hit. I mean, if you get like Vlad Guerrero Jr. autograph, like one of ones, you know, low number of parallels, I think. I think people really like. It's a lot like Bowman in that sort of sense. Except with more rookies and, and veteran player names and whatnot. Oh, one auto and two relics per jumbo box. So there's three hits per box in the jumbo. Oh yeah, there's a commemorative medallions that pop out at the end. Yeah, those are pretty cool too. Fun fact, Logan says, a baseball game, real play time is only 18 minutes. I think that that's like football too, isn't it? Like actual time where, where people are actually... Running a play isn't very long. Was this the Eric Fed that I missed? What did it did it have this pattern? There's the Aussie Albia, so that'll go to you, Scott. All right, next box. That's right. Uh, that's right, Adam. You will be learning every active player here in the MLB in this break. As we go through all these, you're gonna be you're gonna be like, wait, where do I remember? Where do I remember Robert Stock from? Robert Stock. I've heard of him somewhere. And you'd be like, that's right. It was from that, that two and a half hour uh, double header break that I watched. That series two break that I watched the other week. It'll seep into your head. Scott is calling a Tripper Jones auto. That would be cool. We did see um, we did see a Dave Winfield autograph in like the first and pick your team one of this doubleheader break. This is pick your team two, folks. Who's just joining us. Um, so I know it's possible to get some of those guys, retired players. RTR was surprised to not see camo worn on the Memorial Day Cubs game. Did they not? Maybe it was. Maybe they wore the hats. I think were camo, right? <laughs> Vinny is here. He's calling a Frank Thomas signed baseball.
Did they put Ruth cut autos in this? Sometimes I'll put crazy stuff like that in, in stuff like this. All right, next hobby box. Or was the Eric fed like this? I can't believe I would that. Now I kind of want to look. That's Caleb Ferguson back off the DL or the IL with that goes to Andrew. I wouldn't have missed a pink Eric Fed like that. I guess I did. NYK, what's up, NYK? Jow, will you be at the Nationals this year? No. We will not be, I'm afraid. We're, we're, um, we're actually moving into a new shop at the end of the month, so that's taking up a lot of our time and resources. So we will not be going to the Nationals this year, not officially. I am, I am still working on thinking about going the weekend before, still planning that trip out, going the weekend before to uh, visit some people out there. Maybe hold a casual Jaspie meetup at Rory's shop, Brewtown Trading Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a free plug, Rory. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm kind of working on details for that. Still in the air if I'm going to be able to go, but but, yeah, but we won't be at the Nationals. Even if we did go to the Nationals, I don't think that we would be... Breaking there, though. There's Chris Davis. Nice. Nice medallion there. I think we realize that it's just too difficult to take a... It's out of 150. To take our entire breaking operation all the way out there. All the shipping supplies, all the, all the gear, all the computers and everything, so... So even if we did go, I don't think we would actually be breaking. Robert Roar, um, no, no real big hits yet. We're only about, we're only, we're not very deep into this break yet. So there's still plenty of hits to be found. But I think if you watch the recap of Pick Your Team 1, I think if we if you kind of looked at it that way, I think we got some decent hits popping out of the uh, out of the first couple cases we did. So I'm confident by the time we get to the end of these two cases, we'll have seen a handful of really nice hits among others. Vince Velasquez. Jose Peraza, black to 67. As soon as I turn it around, the cards are upside down this way. There's Zach Granke. Zach Granke, active Hall of is he a Hall of Famer? Zach Granke. I think Alfred was 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 had some stats for us earlier in the break about Zach Granke.
maybe? I feel like Zach Granke has some pretty nice numbers if you kind of look at it. Alfred says, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> Cheater, Hall of Famer as owner. I don't know, well, maybe. We'll see. If he, if he, if he really, after just gutting that team, if he really, if him and his team really do well, drafting everybody, and then starts investing once those young players start to come up the ranks, we'll see. That could be interesting. Yes, Yadi Yadi Molina definitely has been been mentioned as an active player who's already punched his ticket to the Hall of Fame. First ballot too, probably right for someone like Yadi. All right, thanks, Scott. Yeah, we'll have a recap video, man. So you so. Don't waste your time watching the rest of this. <laughs> you can watch the recap video that I'll do for everybody. And, uh, and you can see if we pull that trigger for you. But yeah, we'll see. Marlin, Marlins have got that team. Jeter and, Jeter and the Marlins have got the team. You know, this is something that the Cubs did. This is something that the Astros did. You know, and and the proof has been in the pudding that if you can if you can tank for a couple years, just be really bad, gut the team, bare bones payroll, you know, and you save a bunch of money over those years, you're doing that, and then that prepares you to that prepares you to to kind of craft a young core of players that are that are maybe going to peak around the similar time. You have the money that you saved, you'll be able to put into the team. Spend that money. Like the Cubs have spent a significant amount of money. You know, so if you kind of go with that formula, it's worked well for those teams. So if it works well for the Marlins, it could be great. And all those gold stamp cards that you used the other two, th those will also ship, of course. Uh, Arson thinks that that Jeter would have made a better manager as opposed to owner. Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess Jeter's. I guess I don't know much enough about him to know if he'd be a good manager or not. I, yeah, why? Why didn't he do man? There must have been a reason why he didn't go manage manager. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he didn't want to do the grind of the of a 162 game season. It's Travis Shaw for the Brewers. And Jose Ramirez is your relic out of here. For the tribe, that goes to Alfred. Nice material card. Arson saying, I don't think Jeter spent enough time away from the game to come back into a role as demanding as manager. I see. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm trying to think, like Alex Cora, right? It's with the Red Sox, did spend some time away from the game, and but I mean, not away from the game itself, but like he was, he was broadcasting. He was kind of still following the game pretty closely. But kind of got away, just mentally, I guess, just away from that daily grind of being a manager, and then 
when he was ready, you know, he was back back into it. Just like uh, I think Aaron Boone too was with ESPN. I think the Yankees manager was also with ESPN for a little bit. Arson saying, but hey, I, th I think that Jeter's got a good understanding for the flow of the game, good leadership qualities that would translate well into a manager position. I always thought that, you know, I always thought that he would he would manage the Yankees. I, th I thought that was inevitable. I didn't think he'd go ownership route like this. I just thought like, hey, you know, I guess Jeter would eventually come back and manage, right? So Michael's also saying front office really isn't baseball anymore. It's just business, and I didn't understand Jeter be, to be a guy that kind of liked the business side of things, yeah, which, is, which is interesting. One of my favorite Jeter stories is at the All-Star Game. And it was a Fox broadcast in the All-Star game. And um, Joe Buck was walking through the, the, through the AL locker room. And this is live TV. So just pre-game, he was walking through the, uh, through the AL locker room. And it was like a, one of those tracking shots where it's, he's like a walk and talk sort of situation. And I'm not a big fan of Joe Buck. And, and so he gets to, he goes through the locker room and the corner locker at the very end, of course, is Jeter's locker. And Jeter's just kind of sitting on a chair, elbows on his knees, just kind of looking up, being like, all right, what is this? And then he's, he pretty much tells Joe Buck, get out of here, bro. We got a game to play. And there's an awkward smile on Joe Buck's face. And then they cut to commercial. I think there's a YouTube video you can definitely find of that. It's pretty classic. There's Ryan Brazier. And all these home run challenge cards will go to the team that's depicted there. All right, and next box. Three boxes to go in the hobby, and then we got six more jumbo boxes to go. Oh, Milwaukee and Houston are still tied at three in the top of the 14th. I've got a small financial investment in Houston's success today. But they're still tied at three in the top of the 14th in Houston. I still have good hopes for the Astros because all they need to do is score a run in their half of the inning, the bottom half of the inning. Giants are up 4-2 on the Padres. What are some other final scores we got here? Uh, the Marlins shut out the... Shut out the Cardinals nine to nothing. Diamondbacks beat the Phillies two nothing. They shut them out too. Red Sox edged out the Rangers four to three. Cubs returned, delivered the pounding the Rockies gave them last night. Delivered a pounding to the Rockies today. They won ten one in Colorado. Cincinnati beat the Cleveland Indians seven to two. Oakland beat the Rays six to two. It's tied at sevens in Atlanta. Top of the tenth. Phillies and Braves tied at seven. Top of the eighth. In the game that's on MLB Network right now, we've got Giants up 4-2. Tigers beat edged out the Royals 3-2. In extra innings, Seattle beat the uh, Seattle beat the Twins six to uh, nine to six. Blue Jays beat the Orioles. Bird on bird crime eight to six over the Orioles. And again, top of the 14, 3-3 in Houston. All right, Andy, what's going on? First time a viewer and buyer, thanks to Alfred. Alfred, thanks for recruiting, man. Let's go, that's right, let's go Dodgers. They didn't play today. Travel 
travel day? Not really a travel day. They were in Anaheim, but I guess day off. I think they start off the series with the Cubs tomorrow. All right, Rolando, you took the last what of Noir Basketball? I don't think any Noir Basketball sold out. If it is, we'll be doing it tomorrow. We are done for tonight, I'm afraid. Orioles versus Blue Jays, like Arson's saying, is like a special ed kids having a rap battle at lunch. Yeah, it's it's just not not good players on those teams. At least the at least the Blue Jays show promise, you know. With you know, there you, you see a glimpse of their future with Vlad Guerrero Jr. and he's he's exciting to watch, but. You know, and I guess once they start calling up the other young kids, they'll be exciting to watch. But yeah, right now they're pretty bad. Orioles. Sorry, Orioles fans. They're they're a ways they're they are a ways away from getting to where they need to be. There's Adam Duvall. Oh, Brewers take the lead in the top of the fourteenth, Johnny. Come on. I don't got time for that. A two-run lead? What the hell happened? Moustakis. Unbelievable. Moustakis home run. Oh, and there's our hit, Mookie Betts. That'll be a relic for Derek Williams and the Red Sox. Everyone see that uh, that home run last night by Hunter Pence, I think it was. Mookie Betts' teammate, Brock Holt. Dives into the stands. Dives into the stands, reaching for a uh, a Hunter Pence hit, and he thought he thought it went over his head into the stands, but it bounced off the off the I think the middle of the wall that's there, the outfield wall, and trickled away into the uh, onto the warning track and just kind of sat there. And Brock Holt just kind of took his time. He thought it was a home run. He kind of. Kind of climbed out of out of the thing and blah blah blah. And Hunter Pence is chugging around the bases and and Hunter Pence scores a home run, when, runs runs an inside the park home run. I don't know what uh, I think Mookie plays center. Right? I don't know what Mookie Betts was doing. Didn't he see the ball? I feel like he didn't run to it, or maybe he just realized too late what had happened. Charges dropped on that guy, apparently. Oh, come on. Jesus Aguilar. Yeah, I'm now I'm now I'm paying attention to the game, Johnny. I have MLB game day up. Jesus Aguilar in play runs. I don't like seeing that. It's David Hess.
There's Buck Farmer for the Tigers. Monty Irving. That monster box all full. All right, two boxes to go in hobby. And then jumbo time. Also, if the if the Orioles and Jays add their win totals together, they'll be first in the AL East. Maybe they should combine combine teams. See. That's why when I see, um, sorry, let me get these packs on camera. Here. That's why when I when I hear to people talking about talking about like expansion, I don't think the, I don't think the MLB should expand. We we ha we have a hard time fielding thirty quality teams, right? Imagine another two, another thirty two teams in the league. It's another like twenty five man roster, another forty man roster. I mean that. I guess that talent is already watered down. Can't add teams. <laughs> Parsons, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but just thinking about how it feels to have Orioles season tickets. I want to. I want to talk to the Baltimore Sun. Should do a report on. On should do uh, an interview on someone who has Baltimore season tickets. Like, I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about like corporate seats. Not like a company, not like a bank in Baltimore that like has seats for clients and stuff like that, no. Like someone who personally called up, you know, a new season ticket holder. Someone who called up and said, hey, uh, I'm interested in getting season tickets this year. <laughs> I guess maybe you would. Maybe it would be at an all-time low, Arson. Right? Maybe season tickets are so cheap, you would have to get them. Like, they must be a bargain. I'm like, yeah. Take the family to go, take, take the wife and kids to go see a, take in a ball game, season tickets. Add teams, decrease break prices. I don't think it'll work that way. I think like the, you know, the the Portland Sockeyes would still be like. I guess they. I guess they'd still be like they'd become like a hundred dollar team, you know, because then they'd have like some hot rookie that's on their team, and then some other terrible team just ends up being like a ten dollar team or something like that. I don't think it would help. In fact, the cases of the costs would go up because there'd just be more teams and more autographs. Doesn't work. Tops and Panini would be like, hey, we got two extra teams. Two extra teams to go source autographs and relics from. That increases the cost of the product. And that gets passed on to the distributors, which then get passed on to us, which then gets passed on to you. So the Astros are finally out of that inning. They are down three runs, six to three. Six to three um, Brewers going into the bottom of the 14th. I don't know who's coming up to bat, but maybe they'll make something happen. There's Andrew Benintendi. 
Game use memorabilia. I'll bet Andrew Benintendi wouldn't have wouldn't have done what Brock Holt did. That goes to Derek Williams. There's Franklin Barreto. And all of those will be sleeved and top loaded before they go out. All the serial numbered cards, of course. Tender Inciarte. Who's gonna he's gonna get Wally pipped, right? Austin Riley's been raking. Last MLB expansion. I think so. No. Wasn't Marlins earlier? Wasn't like Rockies Diamondbacks came in around the same time? It was Marlins first, then Rockies Diamondbacks? Or Mar was it Marlins Rockies? I don't know. Where's Arthur? Ar Arthur's in Phoenix. He should. He may know the history. I don't think there needs to be expansion to 32. I think 30 is a really good number for Major League Baseball. Right, five teams in each division. It's already nicely set like that. I feel like you have 32. Do we do we make divisions of four now, like football? Four four teams eight divisions to make 32. So the, di the divisions get kind of out of whack if you add to add a couple teams, unless they're thinking about changing divisions around. I think a lot would have to change. Where would you put an expansion team? No, a team has to move. I think they would just have to move. I, thought, I think Vegas could have one. That's right, Jason. Yeah, I think so. I think NHL's already in there. NFL's in there. NBA can't be too far behind. This, this is a question I like. Arson Michael is saying, if there had to be an expansion, what cities would you put it in? Vegas. You put, you put one in Vegas. And I think maybe I want to – I always thought – I always kind of romanticized Portland as being a good city for baseball just to create a natural Pacific Northwest rivalry with Seattle. And then when teams travel there, it's not just for Seattle. They can kind of stay in that area. Kind of a brutal travel schedule to go all the way up there and then elsewhere. You know, people say this all the time with the NFL too. I don't know, what do you think, Arson? What cities? I would say Vegas and Portland. All right, last box of hobby. Almost there. What does everyone think? Everyone can weigh in. Jeffrey Burton saying Rockies, Marlins in 93. Oh, it was Diamondbacks in Tampa Bay in 97. Johnny's thinking Vegas and maybe New Orleans? I don't know. Arson, you would say New Orleans too? They're talking about taking basketball out of New Orleans. I feel like that's so much of, of a football region. Maybe that's, maybe that's just me just stereotyping you know, Louisiana, but it feels like such a football region. Although LSU is a good baseball team too. They have a good college baseball team. Yeah, if they put Seattle back. That... Yeah, I think Vegas is definitely a, a place that all the major, all the leagues are looking at. They, yeah, you got you, yeah. Yeah, dude, yes, we did pull a Luka Doncic out of, uh, out of Noir earlier tonight. That was pretty nice. I'm sure we'll do more cases tomorrow. 
we're full for the night, folks. So anything that's sell, sold out after this current break that we're doing right now, unfortunately, the, we have still have another case to do. We'll probably this will probably bring us to pretty much the end of the broadcast. I got to do a hit recap as well, and then put everything away. So I think we'll pretty much be done, which is fine. We're at, we're at a good stopping point. And we'll come back tomorrow and we'll rock through another, uh, maybe maybe we'll do another double header break tomorrow. Which will uh, kind of dust off our stock of Series 2. And then we can rock through Noir and other fun stuff throughout the rest of the week. Alright, Alfred's weighing in. He says Nashville and Portland. Nashville. Ooh, Interesting. Nashville has a soccer team. I th Vancouver could be interesting too, but I feel like Vancouver doesn't like pro sports, right? <laughs> Except for yeah, Vancouver Grizzlies, and they're like, nope. I heard someone say Montreal again, but I don't know. If Ooh, Montre Montreal again, maybe? Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver is a yeah I, th I think Vancouver would be great, but I think, I don't know if they're they're, they're going to be able to sustain a baseball team. Yeah. It's, it's either Canucks, Mariners, and then the, that's it. Oh, yeah, they got, a, they got a soccer stadium up there, too. Yeah, Vancouver Whitecaps, I think. But yeah, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind another uh, team in Canada. I don't know about Alabama. Maybe Alabama. I feel like the South is kind of hard because the Braves have been there for so long and kind of unchallenged by, kind of regionally unchallenged by uh, by any other major pro team. So like maybe Tennessee and 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 Alabama and those kind of areas. It's I feel like it's tough. Astros lost. I've heard Albuquerque, the Dodgers. I, I think I think there's still a big minor league team there too. The Dodgers used to have their Triple A or Double A team in Albuquerque for a long time. So there's some baseball, there's some baseball history there. I've heard North Carolina a lot. Charlotte, I think, could sustain a team. Right. That's a growing city. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of businesses and a lot of yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey was like, "Hey, throw something to the, throw, throw something at the Carolinas." Uh, there's the world famous Carolina League, you know. I mean, so there's there's rich baseball history in the Carolinas. You would think they would be able to. What's the closest? What's the closest team that would be there? Yeah, you got the you got the football team there too. You know, there would be, what, a natural... I think it's far enough away from, like, Baltimore and Washington, D.C. And just far away enough from... Actually, Charlotte would be pretty great. Far enough away from Atlanta to... To maybe kind of fill that, you know, fill that Carolinas, Virginia-ish region, South Virginia-ish region get that team and Kentuckians who didn't end up becoming Reds fans oh right yeah Albuquerque is now the Rockies a Rockies affiliate San Antonio could be interesting is there, is there room for another team in Texas Rangers and Astros I guess. Salt Lake City would be interesting too, yeah. Un unless maybe, un unless like Denver like dominates that area. The Karakis that is, to kind of, if, unless they dominate that area market-wise. 
Major League Baseball probably wants to put a team internationally. Mexico City, Puerto Rico. And there's Ryan Sandberg. Piece of his lumber. A <laughs> baseball team in Japan. Can you imagine that flight? An MLB team all the way out there. Hawaii would be lucky to have a team in the MLB, let alone Japan. I think it's crazy that NFL wants to put a team in, like, London. I mean, that's that's kind of brutal. Can you imagine, like, there, there'll be a year where the Seattle Seahawks will have to go all the way to London <laughs> and then end up having, like, a month-long road trip and then come back and work their way through the United States before they go back home to Seattle. All right, Hobby Box is done. Hobby box is done. Actually, I'll just keep these here because I need those for the recap. Now, here comes the jumbo. Six boxes, 10 packs per box. And this one has more stuff. I think one autograph is guaranteed per box and then a couple relics. So, there'll be more hits. Oh, and a poster. What's going on with this? Oh, National Baseball Card Day. We'll be all about this. We'll have our new shot ready to go by then. Right, Johnny needs a Helton or a Blackman autograph in Jumbo. Now, po <laughs> posters going up in the shop. We've got a lot of wall space to fill, <laughs> apparently. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I've driven by it. One autograph and two relic cards in every hobby Jumbo box. That's actually kind of confusing. Just call it a Jumbo box. In every Jumbo box. So there you go. So now, six autographs to go and 12 relics to go. Uh, Marshall, Michael, why were you going to Tokyo again? Was it you and the wife or girlfriend were like, pick a spot and she was like, let's go, let's go Tokyo? Is that what it was? I think that's what your story was. Actually, you know what, Alfred? You know what, Jason Jaspi? Someone ruined those poster randomizers because we sent it and we sent it in a smaller box and we like folded it a couple extra times to get it into the box and they complained. Wait, we gave away posters? You know, sometimes like Bowman's Best, they'll be like these posters are those Series 1 posters that come out. Yeah. And we had these and to put them in those little boxes, we I think we folded it a couple times oh, like this so there was an extra crease in it or something. Yeah. And that person, that, that person got mad. And then, and then boss man was like, nope, Joe, we're not randomizing those again. Oh, yeah. Right. So someone, ru so someone ruined it for everybody. Because before I was just randomizing them. I think it was like 2017, Bowman's Best Baseball, like the year before the most recent one. And there were those posters in there. And every break I'd be like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just give them away to someone in the break, blah, blah, blah. No big deal. You know, and then about, about 10 cases in. I forget who, I honestly don't know who. I wouldn't say his name anyway, or her name. Uh, I honestly don't remember who it was. Maybe that person is still shopping with us, and they're like, hey, that was me. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think because of that, that ruined it for everybody. 
I was like, why don't we randomize those? And then I then I had that flashback. Oh, nice. So Arson said, yes, told her to pick anywhere in the world, and it was Tokyo. Have you ever been, have you guys ever been to Asia? That's good. 18 hours. Orlando to Montreal to Tokyo. That's brutal. I actually don't think I was told who it was, to be honest with you. So that person could be here in this room right now. Because it was just like someone complained. Well, we're not going to do it anymore. It's all I got. I was like, okay. But they didn't say who it was. They didn't say it was like, oh, it was Alfred. All right. Jumbo one. Almost there, folks. Never been to Asia. That's exciting. I haven't been... Um, to, I, my, I have relatives in South Korea. I haven't been. I have not been to South Korea since I was a wee lad. A wee lad. <laughs> no, I don't think it was him. I I honestly think it was. I I don't know who it was. Um, so, Michael, how long are you staying in, in Tokyo? The, uh, I want to say Jaspies. Did Jaspies go to Tokyo? Yeah, I think two years ago, two or three years ago, our distributor uh, had taken, took like Nick Jaspie and, and another breaker uh, on like a, on a little mini tour in Asia. And I think they went to Taiwan for... Nick said it was it was it was he's like Nick said it was fun to go there, but didn't, he really didn't get a lot of time to go out and do stuff. It was where they were working most of the time. There's Ozzy Smith medallion. So you get these commemorative medallions, which are pretty cool. That goes to Jerry. And the Cardinals, and so he was in. I think he was in Taiwan for a couple of days. And, and then Tokyo for a couple of days, just busting open uh, Bowman baseball, I think. So he didn't really get to see, do a lot of stuff, but he said it was, he said it was pretty cool. Um, who am I, I, I can't, that is not a language I can read. Who am I supposed to pull? So how long are you staying there? What do you do, do you, what, do you have anything planned? I would, if I, if I went to Tokyo, which I've never, I think I've only been, Tokyo maybe on a layover when I was a little kid to go to to go to Seoul but I would say I would go I want bullet train I think a bullet train would be cool a week that's pretty that's that's a decent amount of time bullet train go to a mountain you know, do some touristy stuff in the city. I definitely, yes, definitely go to Disneyland. I heard, I heard Disneyland Tokyo or Tokyo Disneyland, however they say it, is, is insane. Oh, you got to go to, a, where are you going? You got to go to a baseball game. There's Alex Avila. You gotta go to a baseball game. That would be cool. And there is Nolan Ryan. Piece of the Nolan Ryan lumber out of 25. Astros, back, probably back when the Astros were an NL team. And that is gonna go to uh, James. James with the Strohs. Yeah, I need to find some uh, Dodgers for, for Andy, right? Andy Kova with the Dodger, with my Dodger, maybe a little Dodger Joe Mojo. 
Is that is the Japanese baseball season still going on? July tenth through eighteenth. Kepler. Kenta Maeda. Ah. Uh, Chen Yi is looking for uh, the for Ichiro. Got it. Oh yeah, that is cutting in close. After like an eighteen hour flight and layovers. And the time change. <laughs> We should be guaranteed an auto here. So we had the medallion and the piece of wood, piece of Nolan Ryan's lumber. And we should have a guaranteed auto. There it is. Legacy of Baseball, Nick Birdie. Autograph for Michael Gallucci and the Pirates. One ten out of one fifty. Find some other low numbered parallels here. Got all three hits. space here. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, this is the last break of the night. This will the, the next five box, five jumbo boxes here. Probably gonna take me another, I don't know, forty-five minutes or so. 
And then I gotta put all this stuff away. Then I gotta do a recap video. And by the time we do all of that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll probably be right at the end of the night. So anything that sold out after this break had started will go off tomorrow. I don't think anything has sold out. Did it have something sold out? I don't think it has, but. Oh, so the Tokyo baseball team, you don't even want to see. Our, the record is the same as the Orioles. I think if you could go, though, you should try to squeeze a game in. I think Nick Nick Jaspi, when he was on that trip, he said they, they were able to squeeze in a baseball game. And they said it was they said it was wild. Like, I want to say, like, um, and I think Korea gets a little gets a little wild in the stands, too. It's a little more active watching. So I think both Korea and Japan have. Uh, I, I think it spills over from like soccer, to be honest with you, like like how there's a lot of singing and chanting, in you know in soccer, and a lot of songs and stuff like that, and a lot of activity in the stands and you know musical instruments and stuff like that. So I think I think they've got more of more of that kind of action there. I guess more college football like, or I guess back in the day, Brooklyn Dodgers had like a band in the stands. So. There's all sorts. I think it's it's a lot like that. Silver Sluggers. Hosmer gives props. 25. That'll go to the Padres. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Like NHL atmosphere. I can see that too. Which I think especially for the... Especially for the Japanese. I feel like who, you know, are stereotypically a more reserved kind of culture, right? They, they really go nuts for their sports. Yeah, go for it. They go really go nuts for their sports teams. My brother was asking like if my, one of my my best man was like, does he still live in the same area where he lives? I'm like, yes. Who? Like my brother was asking, and I was like, why? He's like, Cause the, this is like an active like chase in where he lives. And he's in the, oh, El Monte. He's in the country club where they live. Oh. <laughs> There's like a chase in there. Watch it, your. <laughs> and then my, my friend texts me and he told me they don't they're not letting me into the. Into the, oh, uh, because into the area. Well, these guys just going in and out of the yeah. parking lot. Oh man, there's a car chase on, on local television. I saw a like, put it on is that a is that a is that a '90s <laughs> '90s <laughs> white CRV <laughs> maybe? Oh, there he's stuck. He's in like yeah, this. No, no way he's like in there. this apartment complex yeah, there's only one where way it's in, just. He must live around there because Probably. usually usually they say in car chases they'll uh, they'll go back to a more familiar location. Oh, he's done. He's like in an apartment complex where there's just a bunch of those uh, those little uh, apartment complex with the trees over the parking spots kind of thing. So they're just weaving. He's just weaving in and out of there. How far do you live away from there, Jason? Like two minutes. Two minutes? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's not too far from my house. But he's not. Never, he's never going to get out. Oh, he's, you're stuck, dude. Yeah. Just give up. There's a nice medallion right here, Reese Hoskins. It's a different color there. Lower number, yeah, out of 50. I don't know, maybe someone, you can find it on Twitter, maybe, for those of you who are not in the Los Angeles area. My friend's like, it's just crazy right now. I can't even get in. There's cops everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I guess maybe try to maybe try to run. Who do we root for in this situation? Like, this? <laughs> do we root for the driver? Just because you know they never escape, so you kind of root for the underdog in a car chase. But I don't know. Maybe he like. High school is like next to that, uh, that area. But then then he, then they're like, yeah, he kidnapped a kid. And they're like, oh, okay, right that's weird. The <laughs> and then I'll be like, all right. You can't root for that guy. But like if it was just like he stole a pizza, then I'd be like, oh okay, I'll root for that guy. Right. <laughs> Slow news night, I guess. Yeah. Get a little, little extra volume here on on this car chase. 
happening inside Brookside Country Club Mobile Home Park. It's in the uh, city of Elmonte. And what you've been watching along with us, uh, everybody there at home, is a uh, driver of a uh, stolen uh, CRV, Honda CRV. Oh, the stolen car. Around and around and around inside this very uh, uh, large mobile home park. <laughs> He's <laughs> stopping at stop signs. There's Miguel Andujar for the Yankees. That's for Levi Johnson. I'll allow this link, Arson. Yeah, there, there's a link for people who want to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. There's not that many streets in that area. It's, it's just like a dead end. Well, you go in one way and you come up the other. That's all it is. Well, folks, we got another 40 some odd minutes in this break, so we might as well watch a police chase together while we're watching this break. Now you got CBS. We're watching on Channel 9. Which is a local station here. There's Anthony Rizzo. Maybe they might be the same affiliate. Even with with Well, Stu, every time we think we've seen it all, uh, yeah, we haven't seen it all. Here we go with the uh, uh, driver who just doesn't want to leave the area. Can't leave the area. Can't leave the area. Yeah, they're they're blocking. My friends are they're blocking the entrance. They're not gonna let them leave. Have you seen the video where the guy is watching a car chase on the news and that same car turned on his street? We had a car chase out here where the car flew by here. And then Nick Jaspi had texted me and was like, I saw the store. Oh, maybe so it is the same, Pito. Okay. Yeah, so if you click that link that Arson just dropped, we're watch, we're, you can watch the car chase with us. This is uh, located maybe about... 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes east of us as the crow flies. Yeah. What's up, Hunter? What's going on? It's to 79. The backs of these feel different. It feels like a regular baseball card as opposed to these glossy ones. Regular baseball? Like an old school baseball card? Police chases are always fun. Unless it ends in tragedy, then it's not fun. Then you feel bad. Oh, that's a dual autograph. That's Gary V's top entrepreneurs in baseball. Um, so this guy's an entrepreneur. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do with this. Stay tuned for this. This is going to be fun. There'll be a randomizer to get that guy. And then there'll be a randomizer between whoever gets the Gary V spot and the Indians. Alfred. Three out of twenty-five. Sorry, Alfred. We it's a dual auto. We gotta we gotta assign that to somebody. I don't even know those cards are in there. Gary V is the guy. Um, I'm gonna drop another link for you guys that you can watch a little bit later or during this break. Gary V is the guy that was on the Rich Eisen show not too long ago that was talking about how baseball cards, that sports cards, basketball cards are making a, a, a comeback. So he's, he's pretty bullish about the state of the industry. Uh, 
Oh yeah, front tire is down, folks. Right, Johnny. Yeah, vintage stock card, I guess is what, what that one is officially called. That Giants one. All right, we've got... All right, drive safe. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah, let us know what happened. See ya. I think Jason was saying that... Uh, that one of his buddies, like one of his old high school buddies, lives in that like complex or in that area, and he was saying that he can't get into the the parking area because of that. I know. Sorry, I, I mean it's a dual auto. It could, could have been another team. But we got we got to make it assign it another team. <laughs> Arson's like I low key want him to get out of that mobile. Home. I kind of do too. Then Jason's buddy could actually go home. He only stole only. He only stole a car, so I feel like we can kind of root for him to escape. I guess if he was like a murderer, then I'd, I wouldn't be rooting for a murderer, right? But, but you know, I mean, yeah, he might be just like some some 17-year-old kid who stole a car to joyride and now is just panicking and just freaking out in the car. It's like, what do I do? My life is over, you know? Oh, a tire came off, folks. Tire came off. What if you sold my mom's car? My mom actually used to drive one of those CRVs back in the day, but it was uh, it was a forest green one, so no. Gilo says my hometown had a had an American Idol winner, and they shut down part of the town for when he came back, and it sucked. Who who was it? I don't know. I I don't actually. Never mind. Don't tell me. <laughs> I don't know any American Idol winners. Um, after like Carrie Underwood and and um, maybe one other girl the Since You've Been Gone girl Kelly Clarkson alright so officers the car is disabled tire has come off it's on the rim car is stopped Officers, careful guys, careful officers. I'll drop the link that Arson dropped again. <laughs> oh, maybe that, that link might not work. Um, has there ever been a successful car theft? Yes, tons. Oh, are you talking a successful car theft after they've been chased and with helicopters and police officers? That I would say probably that that percentage of success is probably very low. But there are people who steal cars all the time. But the people that get chased, I feel like almost 100 percent of the time, the people that get chased and have helicopters and everything, like you're done. They're going to catch you. 95 percent of the time. 
giving them command, but they go a little wider just to get a better, cleaner shot right there. We run the doubler for most of it. But uh, right there, you can actually see the uh, hands. Cop behind him. Hands are out the window. Weapons out. We do know there's a canine. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't have to Oh, they got a puppy dog? The dog they got a canine? The dog will be friendly, I'm sure. Jose Abreu. Out of 150. Oh, this is different. I don't think we've seen... This color yet, 28 out of 50, that's cool. Use Mario Pettit for the A's. Doors opening. Manguer Sierra. He's a former Cardinals prospect. I think he went in the Ozuna trade. Yeah, yeah, there's that suspect. Hands on his head, hands up, walking backwards. There's Matt Carpenter. 47 out of 50 on that one. It's on his knees. They're approaching, cuffed, Obviously, uh, definitely clean. A, a positive ending to this. Nobody seemed to get hurt in this situation. And Stu, uh, just double checking. It doesn't look like there's anybody else in that vehicle. Well, they're going to double check. But this, this the get-go, they just said this is the driver in that vehicle. The actual corner right now is going to be Cedar and Oak out here in the Brookside mobile home. And uh, they are going to clear the vehicle like they always do. But the driver in custody, as we understood earlier on, just you Darvish. Here. All right, there you go. Good job, El Monte Police. Nice, nice clean, clean ending here. What kind of charges is that guy facing? Probably all sorts. Using my my limited legal knowledge, uh, the theft of the car itself, right? The evading of police itself, and there's Dennis Santana for the Dodgers. That goes to Alfred's buddy Andy Colville with my Dodgers, little Dodger Joe Mojo. Kind of a young up and coming talent here. Maybe stretch out into a starter someday. Kind of a crowded bullpen, so I'm not, or pitching staff, so we'll see where it ends up. But I, I like his style. And then I guess whatever traffic crimes that incurred while he was driving, speeding, running stop signs, you know, reckless driving, all sorts of stuff. They probably they probably put all of that together, and a ton of fines. And then probably probably jail time for the stealing of the car and the evading of the police. Sentencing, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
couple years, yeah, maybe, right? That I don't know. I mean, he cooperated with cops. He kind of came out quietly, and you know, it was a it was a very quick and easy cuffing. So I don't I don't think there's anything there. So I guess it'll depend on what the circumstances were. If he was just like, you know, maybe he says, hey, you know, I'm a former military guy. I have PTSD and it's not been treated and kind of freaked out, you know? Maybe there's a little leniency for that. If he's like, <laughs> if he's like, a, hey, I steal cars all the time. I'm a car thief. You know, then you're like, all right, we're going to put you away for longer. Right, cooperated, exactly. Well, I mean, at least he didn't get out of the car and run. Yeah, that's right, James. Noir 3 actually filled a little while ago, but unfortunately this two-case break filled up first. And that's going to bring us pretty much to the end of the night. So I'm afraid we're going to have to do that mañana. But thank you, folks. We'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a nice way to kick off the day tomorrow. Local news is so depressing. I don't want to watch any of this. We'll, we'll watch some quick pitch. Did the uh, Giants end up winning? I had financial interest in the Giants. They're playing quick pitch right now, so I figured they did. All right, so Giants held on to win, and Houston lost, so one for four of my picks today. All right, three boxes to go, then there'll be a recap and all that sort of stuff, and we'll get all that set up and squared. Oh, I got to open up those silver packs, too. That's right, so we've got these three boxes plus another 24 packs for those silver packs, which could have a lot of, and all the silver packs will ship, right? So whatever team you get, or whatever team you already purchased, you will get all those cards. All cards ship in the silver packs, and they have a lot of great secondary market value too. All right. The local news, just to put a put a bow on this car chase that we were watching for a little bit, <laughs> just to put a bow on the one one of the uh, one of the news anchors was saying, you know, what goes on in the heads of these people, you know, when they're stealing cars and they're trying to get away, you know, you know, they're not going to get away. I feel like, I feel like when you do that, I've never stolen a car, nor have I been chased by. I've never stolen a car, <laughs> but I think when you're when you're in that situation, you're just kind of like. Yeah, I guess you're trying to prolong the inevitable for as long as possible. You know, I think in your head, there's a small percentage in your head that says, I think I can do it. <laughs> like, I think I could still escape. And only when you, like, lose a tire or run out of gas, only then are you like, all right, no, they got me. 
But I feel like that's what goes inside of the, in the in their heads. They're just like, oh yeah, I can do it. I can get away. And we got nice major league material and autograph. Dylan Bentances. That's another one for the Yankees. Another one for Levi. Six out of 25 on that one, Levi. Nice. Got Andrew Benintendi, MLB Logo Man medallion for Derek Williams and the Red Sox. And it's one out of 50. Tyler Naquin. And there's the Man of Steel, Ricky Henderson. Game used memorabilia. That'll be for the Oakland A's. It's Grego time. There you go, Grego. So those are your three hits right there. Now let's see if we have some some fun parallels. Baseball records that won't be broken. Rick Anderson's got to be up there, right? With those stolen bases. Like single season stolen base records and whatnot. Yeah, Alfred, we got got one for your buddy, Dan Santana, who I am a fan of. Not sure when he's going to be able to crack that bullpen or rotation. There he is again. But he's got a live arm. He he actually made a spot starter or two last year, and then almost a week after, almost immediately after that start, like which was in like August or September. Um, he had like some sort of shoulder issue and they just said, F it, we're just, he's a young kid. We're shutting you down for the rest of the season. We'll see you next year. And so I felt like he was going to be an outside candidate for maybe, maybe fifth starter, maybe bullpen guy or something like that. So he's got a pretty live arm. Great strikeout ratio. Strikeout rate is great. A lot of swing and miss stuff as they say. So I'm a fan. So hopefully Dodgers bullpen could use a little help. He could be good in there. And Ozzy Alves with a walk-off triple. Austin Riley has another home run. Austin Riley, is that your early... Is that your front runner for the uh, NL Rookie of the Year? I think Caleb Ferguson is back off the IL. He can help with that Dodgers crappy bullpen. I guess everyone, but like we live in a world, the Dodgers live in a world where Pedro Baez is now a good reliever. He's actually been pitching really well. He's a good reliever, and Kenley Jansen, of course, still solid. 
And then the rest of that bullpen still still needs work. Don't get me don't get me started on Joe Kelly. I think Caleb Ferguson he in the off season he was talking about how he worked on his curveball with Sandy Koufax. And they were saying that they were saying that 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 curveball looked a little sharp. So if he put all that injury stuff behind him, I could see him be a good a good middle reliever. But I don't know. Guess I'm guess I'm desperate now. Joe Kelly's just killing me. You know, and then a, a lot of people are saying, or you know, like we've got a we've got a local radio guy, David Vasse, who's the Dodgers pre and post game guy. Works for the uh, Dodgers Network every once in a while, local radio station here too. And he, he, he keeps reminding people, hey, Joe Kelly was, was garbage a lot, a lot of last season too. And then made the postseason, barely made the postseason roster and then got hot. And I'm sitting there going, okay, am I expecting that to happen twice in a row now? Like he's garbage for the regular season. And then the Dodgers are put in a position where they have to put him on the post, another postseason roster. And all of a sudden, we're, he's going to go nuts. Am I supposed to believe that? I don't know. I need I need Red Sox fans and I need uh need Cardinals fans here. What do you guys think about Joe Kelly? Or anybody in the NL Central NL Central fans and AL East fans. Tell me about Joe Kelly. Good or bad? He's a SoCal guy too. I think he grew up in Redlands or something like that. Local local kid. Grew up a Dodgers fan. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on him. Fans already hate him because he hit Hanley Ramirez in the ribs, fractured his ribs years ago when he was with the Cardinals, and that took that that took that offensive thump out of the Dodgers lineup then, and then killed us in the World Series last year. Looked lights out last year. And Dodgers pay him a little bit of money, and all of a sudden he's just garbage now. I think he may have. I, I, I know the Dodgers are in a position of luxury because they're, you know, I think they still have the best record in the NL, but we're close to it. <laughs> uh, but I think he still cost us at least like five or six games just by himself. Don't get me started on Joe Kelly. I'm already started on Joe Kelly. Don't get don't let me get into third gear on Joe Kelly. And we got a George Brett medallion. That looks pretty cool. Who's got the Royals in this one? Steven Red Nicky. There you go, Steve. Sixty-six out of one fifty. Nice, Alfred. I don't think anyone's here. Well, according to my my numbers here, I got thirty people watching. Maybe everyone's just falling asleep to the to the dulcet sounds of my voice and the. The hypnotic cards sweeping across their screen. It's like a sort of, sort of a soothing sort of situation here. Unless there's a train whistle, that's going to wake everybody up. I can record an audiobook. I should record I should I should just record myself reading these names. So for to help with insomnia. Mm. 
There's Corey Kluber rally to 150. I can I can help with your insomnia, folks. Just fill up a fill up one of these breaks late at night. Boom. There's the focus. Even the camera's tired. Now I'm definitely starting to run out of steam. Come on, camera. I've oh, got time for this. There we go. Um, are we still looking for the autograph? Yeah, we got two relics, so we're still looking for the auto out of here. So I got to pay attention. <laughs> Once I pull the auto, I can kind of breeze a little bit. <laughs> but if there's no auto, then I, I, I got to focus. I got to pay attention. I can't can't goof off because then I'll miss like an Otani autograph or something, and then people will think I'm trying to steal the Otani, trying to Brandon Cooks in '99 the Otani. Is Lindor in this set? He is, okay. I, f I feel like those, those, those vet guys are harder to hit. Maybe not in this set, actually. There it is. There's the autograph. It's a brave. It's Johan Camargo. On card autograph for Scott. It's black and gold with the Bravos. Nice one, Scott. Out of 150. So there are your three hits right there. Now let's breeze through the rest of these. Because I know there's no more hits to be pulled. It's, unless there's maybe a lower numbered card here somewhere. I haven't seen anything lower than 25, I think, out of here. It's J Hap. He used to go by J A Hap, and then he changed it to J Hap. Pick one, J. Dust off your Jordan Yamamoto cards. I didn't realize he was an American. How many Asian American baseball players are there that are in the majors? Oh, he's a Hawaii, he's from Hawaii, I think. Yeah, from Pearl City. I think Keston Hiura would be the other Asian American major leaguer. He was born in here in California, in Valencia, California, where the where our Magic Mountain is, our Six Flags. He's been in Tendi. Kurt Suzuki, I think, might be. Kurt Suzuki is is also American. Hank Conger, I think Hank Conger is Korean. I think he took his stepdad's last name, but he's Korean. He's from. He was born here. He's American. 
Not too many though. All right, last jumbo box, and we have 24 silver packs to go. Silver packs, silver packs. There could be hits in the silver packs. There could be. In Picker Team 1, we pulled a Tuki Tucson autograph, which was cool. All right, and like I've been saying, this is the last break of the night. I thought if I could hustle, I could squeeze in that Noir break as a surprise, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> this is going to be another like five or ten minutes, and then the pack's another five or ten minutes, and then the recap video will be about five or ten minutes, and then i got to put all this stuff away and shut down the shop and blah, 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 blah. So, no, it brings us right to the top of the hour. So sorry, folks. Sorry, Rolando. I don't think I can do it. Physically, I don't think I can do it, Rolando. We've been breaking nonstop since the beginning of the day. So I don't think I can physically make it. I may... I don't know. Do you, do you, want, do you want me to risk like dropping cards and... Damaging noir cards because I'm just just exhausted. There's Altuve to 'll the medallion is Eddie Murray nice one for the O's that's for David Bruins with the Orioles at a 150 that's our first hit out of here there should be two more one more relic and then an autograph. Yeah, these jumbos are a little exhausting, but hey, it's a new release. People enjoy the series too. And good news is, is that since we did it this kind of double case way, we move through all these cases faster, believe it or not, because we only have one more pick your team tomorrow, and I think that's it. Alex Bregman is your second relic, and that'll be for James and the Strohs. Still looking for the autograph. That will be our last hit of this break. And then the silver packs. Jacoby Jones.
And Jacob Nix is your final autograph for the Padres. That goes to Travis Stevens. Uh, yes, Johnny Sports Cards. That's an excellent point. Thank you for reminding, reminding me. Thank you for reminding me. It will take a while for the shipping team to sort all this stuff out. So, yeah, you can anticipate an extra, maybe not too many, but maybe an extra day. An extra day or two for this stuff to ship out. So keep that in mind. So it's not going to be as fast as us shipping Noir. Noir is going to be able to be sorted out quickly. That's going to get there, get to you quickly. But this will be, this will take a little bit of time. Steven Match for the Mets to 76. So we're going to do this. The rest of these, we'll do the silver packs. We'll do the randomizers for these two. Then we'll do a hit recap video. And that is it for us, ladies and gentlemen. And then we'll be back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. We're going to start the day off with uh, Noir Basketball. And hopefully we can knock out another one of these. And then we will call. And then I'm sure we'll do more breaks tomorrow. And then more breaks the day after that and the day after that. We break seven nights a week now. That's the good news. So whatever we can't get to one night, we're always able to do the next night. Tony Kemp. Oh, it's the vintage back out of 99. There you go. Johnny's already in for the last series, too. Excellent. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, doing it the two case way definitely helps us move out of the shop a little bit faster. All right, to the silver packs. Sorry, Rolando, we'll not be squeezing in that noir tonight. So I'm going to be firm on that. I don't want to waste any more of your time this evening. If you want a refund for it, think because you thought it was going to break tonight, definitely email us jaspiescasebreaks at gmail.com. So, uh, so you can get that refund. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. That's 24 right there. And that goes for everybody. If you bought into that noir thinking that it was going to break tonight, you missed the messages, um, then definitely shoot us an email and we'll take care of you. And my apologies. But we got backed up and our night was full very quickly, very early on. Oh, no, and no, I'm not getting sensitive. I thought you were getting all sensitive about boo-hoo. I thought you were being all Eeyore, Rolando. All right, good. We're good. No, you were, well, you were trying a few times, which is why I thought you were getting sensitive about it. So I'll be like, I'll shoot that guy refund if he wants it. It's like, is this guy about to cry? All right, so these, all of these ship. Vet, rookie, doesn't matter. They'll all ship to, to your teams, right? So, you know, Phillies, you'll still get this Bryce Harper, whoever the Phillies is. We're not shipping these. Sorry. All right, let's play two. There's Ernie Banks to 150. Oh, you did get sensitive. You got confused you, when you got confused by another Rol Rolando. There's dos, dos Rolandos. There is Rolando Garcia, and then there's Rolando Lewis. I 
I hope I wasn't the one confusing it. And there's Elo Jimenez to 150. Was it me? I did. Did I confuse the Rolandos? Oh man. All the packs to be flipped this way to open the packs up a little more easily. Oh, it wasn't me. Okay. So everything is tabby in. If it was me, I'd be like, lo siento. Next stack of eight. Some, some of these could be autographs, so keep an eye out for that. All the stuff out of the silver packs do ship. Ooh, some gold. Clayton Kershaw. Nice. 20, not his jersey number. 29 out of 50. But that goes to Andrew Coville with my Dodgers. Old Dodger Joe Mojo. Thanks to Alfred for... The recruiting, appreciate that. And we got Mo, Mariano Rivera, black parallel out of 199. That'll be for the Yankees, Levi Johnson. Yeah, I think Noir, I'm pretty sure Noir sold out first. I don't think anything else sold out before that. So that should be the first break of the day, Rolando. The... Baloncesta. Jacob DeGrom to 199. That's for the Mets, Joe Ivers. And Toussaint back here. All right, and the last one. All right, Rolando, thanks for hanging, man. Sorry we couldn't get to it. We'll do it tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll just let that cage marinate, man. Let it let it marinate. Get some and get some monsters out there for you. So appreciate it. All right, and for the rest of you watching this baseball, we are almost done. Some silver packs, a couple randomizers, and then I'll do a recap video. So if you missed it and you're just joining us, you'll be like, oh man, I missed. This two and a half hour break, two hour, 40 minute break. Yes, he did. But there's a recap video, thankfully. I'll recap all of the numbered cards from the silver packs and then all of the relics and the autos from the breaks. All right, there's Yusai to 199. And Roberto Clemente for the Pirates to 150. That's pretty cool. Um, these silver pack cards... They're pretty. Sh they're pretty rare. Pretty short printed. I'm, I'm. I'm almost certain. They didn't make a lot of these, and it's not like you can just buy them. I mean, I guess you can buy them out of a local card shop, but they're often. Uh, they're uh, given to card shops depending on how much like series two people pick up. You know, so these are bonuses that we get from tops. There's Chipper Jones to one fifty, so we're passing them on to you. So because of that, not too many of these out there in the world. So which increases the values for these. I'm sure even these will probably, out of 150s, will probably sell for a little bit better than other out of 150s from similar sets. Any autos? No autos in this? I thought that looked different for a second, but it doesn't. My eyes are playing tricks on me. And no auto, but there's Paul Goldschmidt for the Cardinals to 199 at the end. All right. Whew. We're almost there. All right, so we'll set these aside for the recap. 
So I know some of these cards will have different teams on them. So I'm going to do a left, center, right randomizer. All right, so for the first one here, we've got left, center, right on the randomizer. And for this one, someone is going to get the Gary V spot. And then the Cleveland Indians have the Jose Ramirez spot. And everyone gets a chance to get into that question mark spot, except for the Diamondback spot. That doesn't exist. All right, good luck, everybody. Same dice roll, one dice roll for those three lists. Good luck. Four and a two, six times. This one first. One, two, three. Four, five, and six. Good luck, everybody. Uh, right side after six times. So all the right side teams right here will get these faces of the franchise cards. All right, now for this one. This is the Gary V and Jose Ramirez dual autograph. What does Jose Ramirez do? What's his, what's his entrepreneurial exploit? I guess we can look that up later. All right, so let's see who gets into the dual randomizer. Once again, after four and a two, six times. One. Come on, Ram. No, no. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, and sixth and final time. After six times, it's going to be Alfred. Look at that. So Alfred actually owns the Indians in this break, right? Yeah, so I don't have to do a randomizer here. There you go. Ram.org hooked you up, Alfred. So you get this Gary V and Jose Ramirez, three out of 25 dual autograph card. So there you go. Thanks, everyone. Joe for Jaspi's case breaks. See, it worked out. The, the, the hobby gods were like, this, this belongs to Alfred. Thanks, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks to everybody who stuck with us for this long and this very, very long break. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.